accessory dwelling units, also known as ADUs in Massachusetts, are now all the buzz. I'm going to tell you why. Stay tuned. I'll give you all the details on this bill that was passed August 6, 2024 by Governor Healy. She passed it as one of the initiatives on fighting our affordability crisis in Massachusetts, our inventory crisis, and giving homeowners more options with their property to create an accessory dwelling unit. An accessory dwelling unit is basically a right given to you through the state of Massachusetts to have a unit, whether it's in your basement, attached garage, detached garage, or a new building on your property to have a unit that you can use for family and non-family. Yes, meaning you can rent it out by right. You still have to meet all the regulations of the municipality when it comes to zoning and a lot of other things we'll talk about, but it gives you the right to have one no longer can towns and cities prevent you from making an in-law an eight or a unit that you could actually rent out to someone else that's not related to you. This is super important. It's important because we only have so much land. A lot of land is in conservation in Massachusetts. There is not a lot of buildable land left. And in order to meet our housing needs, we have to be flexible. We have to find new ways of being able to create more housing. Whether a family who just wants to put their aging adult parents or a, an adult child in an accessory dwelling unit, or in the future, maybe they want to rent it out. It should be a possibility for homeowners to do this. And this law gives that possibility to, as a right to every single homeowner in Massachusetts. So let's dive in and talk about it and see what it's all about. And at the end, I'll give you some thoughts on how you can proceed, if this might be right for you, or you just want to ex explore it at a high level to see if it, it's even feasible on your property. All right, let's jump right in. <clears throat> We explain what the ADU is. It's basically a unit on your property that can be rented to anyone or used for your family. It can be attached, it can be part of your home or it can be detached. So, so there's some important things to understand when we're looking at this and, and trying to figure out from a high level if this is a possibility for you. There are some things that the towns after February 2nd will be able to do because the, the bill will go into full effect 180 days after passing That'll be February 2nd, 2025. So one, the towns will, can still require a site plan review. They may require a site plan and likely will, if it's especially if it's detached from your property, it's not in an existing building that's on your property. Even if it's an existing building, they may still require it if that's never been finished space. So it's important to, to engage with the town early on or the city and talk to them about your intentions on submitting a proposal for an ADU unit or a request for a permit. It's important to lead off on the right foot with the town or city. Do not go in there and say, you are giving me the right to do this. I have a right, you're gonna pass it. Go in there lightly. They're, they're going to have to follow the regulations of this new bill. If they had any regulations that prevented in-laws, uh, unless they were used by family or other regards, then, they're not going to be able to do that. However, there's still a lot of things that go into giving you a permit for this. Setbacks, utilities to that unit, and a lot of other things that go into it, making sure that unit is built to code. So there's egress and fire safety and all those things that go into doing any kind of improvement or building for that matter. So they can require a site plan for review. They also will have, if it's septic, Title five requirements. If you have a three bedroom septic system in a three bedroom home and you're trying to add an accessory dwelling unit is adding a fourth bedroom or additional load to that septic system, you may have to redo your septic system, add a new system for that new dwelling unit, possibly a tight tank if it's a detached unit and it's not going to have high use and you could just use a tight tank. That might be a possibility too, but those are going to be requirements of the town. So make sure that you can dispose of the sewer properly and that it's not going to be into a system that's already overloaded. Um, number three, re regulations concerning dimensional setbacks. The zoning is still going to be in place for that town. If you're in a district that has a 20 foot setback, then you can be no closer than 20 feet to any line with that new structure. If you had, I mean, just thinking about the possibilities, if you had a garage that was built in the 50s and it's over the setback requirements, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be grandfathered into being able to turn the 
the space above that garage into a dwelling unit if it's over the lines that may be something you have to address with the town so just know that there are setback requirements you can't build a new dwelling unit uh, five feet from the line if it is a 20-foot setback so those are things that need to be reviewed um, they cannot they may i'm sorry they can they can basically put in regulations uh, preventing short-term rentals so if a town has adopted an anti-VRBO or an anti-Airbnb policy to prevent in and out transient um, traffic, then they can still do that. So we, ha you have to understand that may be a possibility. It may not. If it's not, then sure, you you could open up your, your new ADU for uh, vacation traffic. But you're going to have to check on that. That's something that the towns can still do if they had certain reasons for doing so and they put in policies in place they can do that still what they cannot do are these things they cannot require an owner occupancy of that adu that means you can rent it out you can rent it to anyone you want to this is important this is huge because this was a lot of the reasons i believe that a lot of towns really um tried to not allow or pushed hard for no in-laws because they were afraid that people were going to rent them out and so they found different ways of creating um, rules, regulations, and pre preventative measures to even have in-laws. So that's now that that's removed the um, the ability to even have an in-law in your in your property is going to be much easier. It's still going to have to meet certain guidelines for egress, um, but you know, for instance, let's talk about bedrooms. Bedrooms have to have an operable window where someone can fit through it and get out in case of a fire. So that doesn't change. Things like that don't change. Egress, having the ability to get out easily and having separate entrances. Those are also going to be requirements. So our electrical codes, plumbing codes, building codes, et cetera. Those are all going to still apply. So you have to work within those guidelines. However, they cannot deny you uh, the ability to build an IDU if you don't plan to use it for owner occupancy. They cannot require a special permit from zoning. They can't say you need a variance to be able to do this because this is single family zoning. They cannot do that anymore. Um, they can they can <coughs> not require one parking space if you're outside of a half a mile from a commuter rail. What that basically means is they don't, they can't say, well, you're three miles from a commuter uh, rail, so you need two parking spots. Um, same thing goes with if you're within a half a mile of a commuter rail station. They cannot require any parking for that matter. They can't say that, well, you only have three parking spots for your existing structure and you don't have any space for a fourth and therefore you can't have an ADU because you don't have the parking space. So they're basically saying a lot of renters um, would not necessarily have a car if they're within a certain distance of a commuter rail. So you cannot require additional parking for that. They, they, they try to build this bill so that there weren't, let's face it, old fashioned uh, mindset towns that would find all kinds of different ways of, of rejecting ADUs in a roundabout way. They don't want them, they don't like them, so they find ways to adjust them. And, and you know what, there, there are going to be some quirks and things that come up in the next couple of years as people start to do this, that based on each town, that's going to be roadblocks and <clears throat> things that slow down the process. This is why I recommended earlier that if you are thinking about doing this, you engage the town early on in the process as you're starting to build your team for building this ADU unit. So keep those things in mind. And the benefits, the benefits are it opens up the door for you and your family for many reasons. Whether you are looking for an in-law or right now you just want an extra entertaining space, a man cave, a she shed, uh, a, a kick butt pool house, it doesn't matter. You, your needs may now be just extra space. In the future, they may become an adult um, child living at home into their late 20s or 30s um, in or, because this, this world, as we know, is not easy to make away in anymore with the affordability and of, of just life. So giving them the ability to live close by but not in your home anymore is a, is a great option, as well as aging parents, parents that you know, maybe in a single family home that's got two stories and they all the bedrooms are on the second level. They need first floor living. And instead of living with you because they refuse to or you refuse to, they could have an ADU unit on your property that allows them to come and go and have their own safe space and 
what that does is that opens up another single family home that can be sold to a young family or, or uh, you know, the, a first time home buyer or someone that's looking for that property that may not see it in the market right now because we are at a lock. We're at a lock for inventory and homes aren't opening up. So this could free up more opportunities for inventory in our market, which we desperately need. These are all things we need in order to, at some point, level off affordability in our state and not continue to rise on a very fast clip. So those are some of the benefits. In the future, if you need the rental income, you retire, your income's not the same, you don't want to move, but your, your expenses are high with the existing home. There's not much of an opportunity for downsizing anymore because of the pricing. Pricing's still high. You may want to stay in place. That ADU can become a rental income opportunity for you to reduce your overall net on your property to stay in place. These are all options. <laughs> so keep those in mind as you're thinking about who, whether this could be for you or not. Let's jump over to a couple of frequently asked questions because I want you guys to understand kind of, you know, what size home you can build, for instance. And the first thing that I wanted to chat about is the, you know, the size of the home you can build. If you have a 900 square foot home, you can only build a 450 square foot accessory dwelling unit. It can be no larger than 900 square feet or half of your existing square footage of your home, whichever is smaller. So if you had a 2000 square foot home, 900 is the size that you can build. If you had a 1500 square foot home, you can only build an accessory dwelling unit that is 750 square feet. So you basically can't double the size of the living area on your property by going ahead and doing this ADU. Um, so that's just one of the things that we have to think about when we're looking at the feasibility for this. Um, there will be some question marks that come up. What happens if the town zoning is not consistent with the new law? There will be these things that come up and they may be unenforceable. Again, the way you talk to the town and the way your town approaches the town is going to be crucially important. If there are mismatches in current regulations. You will also see in due time in 2025 and, and beyond that towns will adopt new regulations for the ADU to try to comply with the new laws, but then give additional guidelines of what the town expects for submissions and approvals, et cetera. So keep that in mind as you go. So now that we've kind of gone over all the rules, you're probably sitting here thinking, okay, this is not for me, that's okay. You may see a neighbor doing it and submitting it. And now at least you know a little bit about the laws and what's allowed and what's not allowed. But if this is for you, this is something you think, maybe this could be for me. I would love to chat with you, help you at a high level, figure out if this is even feasible on your property or in your home and whether it might be right for you or not. I have 20 years of real estate experience, another 20 years on top of that of construction management experience. I'd be happy to go through, look at the setbacks, look at the possibilities, the potential costs and help you figure out if it's worth taking the more steps or not. You don't wanna waste a bunch of time if it's just not feasible for you and your family. If it is feasible, then we can help align you with the right builder. We are building relationships with builders who are keying in on this as a strategy that they want to help and give back to the state that they love and help people build these on their property. We're working with one builder in particular right now who's developing sets of plans so that you can, if you're building a detached ADU, it's super simple. You pick a plan you like, it's already predetermined, the price is already predetermined. The only variables would be things like the electric, the sewer, and the water to get it to the property. Other than that, you've got a floor plan, you pick the floor plan you like, it's predetermined what the price for that the building of that unit is. And then it's just a matter of the variables. Super simple, super easy, so it doesn't complicate your life. And they will go through the process with you and they will handle everything. They are also looking into building sustainably and using materials that are sustainable, using pre-built components, um, highly, highly energy efficient components and prefabricated components in order to build you a high quality ADU one that's energy efficient and uses as minimal uh, utilities as possible and gives you a low cost product. So that are by using products that are cheaper than stick building um, and better energy efficient than stick building. So there's all kinds of technology that's going into this. 
especially with some of the the, the uh, relationships we're building now. So we can help you along the path. We can help you get there. Call me anytime if you have questions about this. I'd love to chat with you about it. I'm passionate about this. I think this is a huge opportunity for our state. And I want to lead the path with learning and educating myself, educating others, and helping people get to having an ADU on their property, if that is what their goal is. So call me anytime, 978-400-1617. My name is Tracy Barber with the Lux Group. I, I really hope to chat with you sometime about this. And I'm going to keep pushing out more videos to educate people on this process. And as I go and see clients doing this, what's happening? How are the towns reacting? What are the regulations the towns are imposing? How are people getting through this? If So, uh, you know, this will not be a one-time video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one and take care.